one as well, so... It was a 2v4. After... No, not after... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly on the beat side. Oh, yes, it looked amazing for TSM. They got... Actually, that was probably one of the best looking rounds for TSM on that first round of the last map, but... Here we go, into the pistol. And... We see a pretty standard setup, actually, from TSM. They haven't pushed anyone up at middle or anything, it's just Carrigan, he's the only guy who's really pushed forwards. He's gonna have some information towards Cat Orc, he'll spot a couple players, but so far they don't really know anything for sure. It's just regular map control plays coming in, and uh, Device is sitting there looking for a mid PK. He's gonna spot a couple players, gonna make the call up Cat, and then it's on, on Carrigan now to actually make the frags happen defensively. Kind of playing it like the AWP there, just one shot looking for the head, doesn't get much more than a tag. And now Zip mixes here with him as well. Cajun B also playing towards long, so the NRP are going to be dropping into the crosshairs of TSM. They just have to connect the bullets, and here NIP come. Good crossfires coming in for TSM, but they're not getting the kills just yet. Three on three here. NIP pretty tanked up. The bomb still needs to go down. It's on the bomb site though, and Ali's going to do that. Device though, oh he can't get the kill, but he does get Alu down to 16 HP. Device, he's the last man standing. Swapped out for the Glock as well. He's got quite a bit of time to play with here as he makes his way up. Looking for the, the jump shot. There has spotted Alu. He's so low. And Alu gets the headshot. Device has to feel completely robbed. Yeah, and just that jumping pistol in that position is just so random. And usually you get the kill after like three or four jumps. So it was very unlucky yes, that he yeah. didn't get that kill. And. Uh, after losing 16 to 1, losing the pistol in that manner. And uh, we seem to have some uh, issues here. Yeah, we'll yeah. give you guys an update as soon as we get the information as to what's actually happening. Of course, you can see that um, quite a lot of players have disconnected from the game, mostly, well, three TSM players and even someone from NIP. So, um, well, we've only seen really a pistol. And I wonder, did someone disconnect during the pistol? I like, if actually... it's going to be replayed or. I guess, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll find out for you yeah. guys as soon as possible. So, um, the, I mean, you were talking to me previously about you know, how, do we, how do we analyze map number one. So there's not much we can go to regarding map number one, because again, it looked like just, you know, NIP was super, super hot and TSM couldn't get anything going. That round, that pistol round, that one round that we have to analyze. Oh, okay, so we are going to restart the pistol round. So, oh, uh, no restart. So there's no restart. Got you guys, maybe. So no restart. Uh, on the pistol round, so that's going to go to NIP and uh, TSM. They're they're down now. They're going to have a bad economy. What kind of rounds are they looking at? Um, are they going to go for the full buy? Should they save up? Because you know you want the ops going pretty fast. How should they go for this? Uh, oh, triple scout. They're actually <laughs> okay. going for the triple scout, which is kind of crazy. I I think Dust Two is one of the harder maps to play the scouts on, but uh, TSM might just prove me wrong here. Well, the first man to go down. That's going to give them the confidence to keep pushing towards B. Dupree is now at the back of the site with a 5-7. And uh, he's got he made there with the Cajun B with the scout. And again, NIP just, they look so confident moving into these sites. Uh, TSM not really getting any hits even. Um, two of them down straight away. They're going to try to save the scouts and the 5-7 on Zipnix. But, yeah, the confidence for NIP still seems to be uh, going here. In... Watching a lot of Dust 2 games, seeing the four spies as CT, they're so rarely successful on this map. It's not like it's Mirage, where it's very easy to do the four spies on CT because you yeah. can force the like, you can utilize the, the scout in middle, you can do the jumping scout on B, you can go close on A slow with an SMG. Like on Dust 2, if the terrorist just plays it right, you will yeah. never get a like proper duel. And uh, I think PSM should just go for. Should have gone for just P to 50s and tried to get exit kills. And the other thing about Dust 2 as well is that there's even multiple very safe options to play. That was kind of the, the B variant there from from uh, NIP, but there's also the more commonly used A long variation where it's just one big area. You don't really have to worry about close range engagements. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I'm with you there from a um, an analytical standpoint. But so they have managed to save that one scout for this next round. Carrigan. Trying to get some tags going, but no connections just yet. In come the pistols with a short push, and they are going to, going to uh, get the aggression in, but NIP have the bomb site B, and the bomb should be planted momentarily. Now just making sure that everything's safe. Good tag there from Carrigan. Does miss the second follow up shot, and uh, it's all on the remainder of TSM here to make something happen. There is a player Dupree. I think he's saving the AK at top mid. 
just in a pretty unusual spot actually. And uh, that's going to be something that will be hopefully for them taking into the next round. Yeah, we should just spend this around here for right now. So it is uh, just... Uh, did we see team... Okay, no. Uh, it's just Dupree here. He needs to survive. They're going to be trying to hunt him down. You can see they've already kind of uh, started working towards T spawn. Up middle now, they're going to spot him. And uh, I love the ragdoll in this game. <laughs> it's, it is brilliant. And... Another point why it's bad to go for the Force Spice on CT Dust 2 is because you really want to go for at least one off. Yeah. Usually we see team trying to go for the double op setup and uh, just look at TSM now. They don't have a single op, didn't achieve that much on the Force Spice. I think they got two frags on the second round, didn't get a single one on the first one. So, yeah, great start here from NIB. And just uh, for you guys tuning in, there's a bug now where I think the score is actually 3 0 to NIP. Okay, so we'll have to see if NIP can uh, get another advantage early into the round. TSM playing a pretty normal setup at the moment. They've got two on the B bomb site. They've got three towards A in that kind of line. Very standard stuff. And the very fast timing up middle here is going to make life a little bit difficult for Zinix, but he still connects the shots long range. So that's good stuff here from him. And uh, Catwright's moves his way all the way up Catwalk now, looking for the peak from Cage and B, but it's not coming just yet. As uh, now this this is this, this is next level <laughs> production. Oh yeah. So is it next still holding on to the slope, the crossover area, and we <laughs> we have ourselves um, a finally a good round here for TSM. Now, what would you think is the best option here? You're three against five as a tease. You've got 40 seconds left to play with. I should I would just go for the kills. I think NMP can will be able to play next round anyway. Yeah, well, they have got one kill so far onto Carrigan. Now, TSM has control of the uh, upper dark, so this is basically impossible for NIP. Nice shot there from Zipnix onto Forest. He's had a really good round so far, very key frags. Get right to left with 10 HP, he'll probably go down soon as well. I also say what's something that I like from this round is that uh, NIP basically understanding the buy TSM, they knew there wouldn't be an AWP. So they actually just ran down suicide, and they had like a really fast timing into mid, and I and I guess they predicted the setup that it'd be kind of the three, like very fast long kind of setup where you don't have anyone, and that means that you have two on B usually, and there's like nobody watching mid. So that was quite cool. And he was caught out Zipnix. He was kind of in an awkward position, but he got they just got the frag. So that was some individual skill there to save to save TSM. So good stuff there by Zipnix. Yeah, and worth mentioning that TSM did lose two players, so if they lose this round, they will be four. Oh my goodness! This is this is uh, this is amazing. We had so many so many uh, issues here in the grand finals. Everything was smooth up until this point. But... Yeah, it's yeah, and uh, right. I think we're gonna jump back into the game now. Yeah, we're getting back in. So don't worry, guys. We we'll, we won't miss anything. We won't miss anything. We promise. There we go. Yeah, as I was just saying, if NIP wins this round, TSM will be back to not zero money, but their bank will be broken and they will be forced to an eco. Alright, so Forest again, a pretty, uh, pretty uh, delayed timing out into middle here from NIP. They need to get something going so far. They have figured out exactly what the setup looks like for TSM. We've got, you know, player and car, we've got a Zipnix on the slope there, and of course, uh, Look at Exist! That's pretty crazy how far forward he is. He's made his way all the way into CT. Now TSM, they're going to get wrapped around here. They do have Get Right, who's trying, uh, for NIP, trying to work his way into long as well. And they must know that's happening. Zipnik's holding it down though. He's really performing for his team. Just with the AK-47, going to spot uh, the two players by Gandalf. Now, is he going to get wrapped here? No, he gets covered by his teammates. Good stuff there by Cajun B, keeping Zipnik safe, and he all he has to do is focus on short, and he was doing that beautifully. So they, it looks like they are resetting well now, and NIP onto an eco. I think NIP thought that they could just go up short because they knew that TSM did have an op towards the car, but I would still prefer for to do this um, wall of smokes along, and I know NIP has that set up. They have a set of smokes that actually covers the entire A site, but is they opted to go for just uh, their aim play. Yeah, you can see where they usually throw the smokes, but they try to out-aim Sipknicks in the slope and just didn't work out. 
And they're going to try to burst through middle here to see if they can get some damage done. Maybe catch off an Orca or just isolate one Rifler or something. But uh, TSM have a, a perfect setup really to, to engage with any kind of play. So there's the spray down coming in. Zipnix once again getting loads of kills. Gets himself the ace. It is an eco ace but an ace nonetheless. And that's really going to get, get things going. Really bring TSM back to life as they've got quite a few rounds in a row. And it's down to the fact that they're winning the Angels. And I think you, you, know, you just mentioned that. LIP, they could have not gone for like a more kind of tactical play with smokes, but they're still feeling like they can win these angels like so dominantly. So that was, I imagine, why they chose to do that. Yeah, I think they just thought they could just out aim the rifles because they knew that they didn't have an AWP towards the car. But uh, yeah, obviously it didn't work out. And NIP now have given TSM quite a bank, actually. And the Zimnix just did like a pretty fast cat push and then fell straight back down to uh, dropping down to CT, but Freiburg straight out there on long, he does get the entry for NIP and that's exactly what he's supposed to be doing on the team and that is going to turn into big control on a long and the A bomb site has been taken by Alu as well, just standing large and in charge on the crate. And uh, TSM now in a lot of trouble, the Vice and Dupree need to go for the save. NIP have loads of time to hunt them, but their money's not super strong. Should they commit everything to try to get these frags? I actually don't think so. They knew they lost the last round flawlessly. Sipnik's getting that ace uh, in the mid-double doors, but it looks like NIP is just... They're not rushing towards them, at least. Mm. Yeah, yeah, look at NIP's money. They, they really should save their guns here. Okay, and save they all. They have some forward positions just kind of slowly working their way to potential uh, spots where TSM might be hiding with those weapons. I mean, it would be amazing for them to get rid of the AWP, of course. The AWP is like the most dangerous weapon on a save that you really want to get rid of. But as you said, they're playing it super safe, super conservatively. And uh, so far, TSM not doing too badly on Dust 2, but NIP looking pretty good to get themselves back into a situation where they can break the economy of, of TSM because they don't have a huge amount of money. And we actually saw a, a bison just laying there see the spawn, so that's one way to break your own back. Shout out to get Dupree bison. Okay, double peak angle here. Interesting actually. No smoke or anything, they're just double peaking that. Don't see that setup quite often. I, I, I don't think I actually have seen a setup like that recently. And I I might have been expecting just a straight up B push from NIP. NIP flashing forward here on short. I think they might be going for that A execute now with the wall of smokes. Cajun B, I think he's at a car with an op. It's a standard position. Just very standard dust to play here from both teams. NIP just taking control of short TSM, playing that one C to spawn, one guy car, one guy very aggressive long, and just two guys on B. The problem is, is that they don't know, I don't, I don't think, uh, NIP, what the setup is exactly for TSM. So, do they go for the cat drop? Do they go for the play into A? Well, they don't have a guy in upper dark at the moment. They can position like that, but it looks like uh, they're going to go for the A execute here, the split, uh, leaving Get Right alone to do the damage on A long. And Get Right, the way that they play it is, with Get Right is definitely a little bit different to most teams because he does kind of bait a little bit more, lurk a little bit more. But there's two players towards Long, so if they shut down Get Right straight away and keep control of Long, that's going to be really strong. But Zipnix this time going to go down instantly from Exist, and Get Right gets a really fast kill onto Carrigan. Things not going well at all here for TSM. They are going to. This is basically a very similar situation. Now they just they just have to save. And I must question Zipnik's choice there to jump on the box like. If you jump on that box, he should have known that the NIP players will spot him. It's the only place that they should yeah, be looking. Yeah, and, and, and right? they will be like spread out two to three AKs, and I can just like, how could he possibly manage to kill him there? Yeah, it's it's one of those spots where, for example, like you'll see um, sometimes these smokes where like a gap is left, and everyone's like, oh, there's a gap. Let's go into the gap, and that, of course, like the CT through the smoke is looking at the gap because it's like the only place that. He can, he can see, and obviously if you run for the smoke, you still have, you still have the advantage on you. So it felt like that situation was, it was just like, oh, maybe I can just look over the smoke. But there's literally no other way as the T's coming there that, that that you have to worry about any other position. So double up now, Alu and Forest, and this is what makes their T sides really scary. Yeah, and just a great round there for NIP. I, I love that wall of smokes and aids. It's so effective. So what, what are you supposed to do when... 
you're playing all rifles against a team that's double orping on T side of Dust2. One thing you actually can do is that you try to go aggressive uh, in the dark tunnels, just try to get early control of the map, push with either three or four people. But it actually looks like TSM is just opting for the standard type of play. And it's actually okay, I mean, if NIP is doing that wall of smoke, it, you can't really do something with an off on A anyway, so going for that this M4 setup is not really that big of a deal. And it must feel pretty good to be TSM right now, actually having Forrest miss that AWP shot, but NIP now going to go for the push onto Long, and Carrigan gets the kill onto Freiburg. So no entry there for NIP, Long has been shut down. Now NIP are deciding to go for the mid play. The setup from TSM quite strong. Ali's going to have to hit this entry here onto the player. I believe it's uh, Zipnix who has the angle and device obviously as well, but he shouldn't be too easy to uh, shoot. He's going to back away, just gets the info for his team. Now, CT should be smoked off. Actually, Forrest is going to get a kill onto Zipnix who was on the crossover towards A. So it looks pretty good for NIP. Do three. Oh, great position, great work, triple, and that's going to be TSM securing the round and keeping themselves in the money. Yeah, and that looked really scary for TSM, actually. If you let the terrorists go out that far in middle, and they just do that, they just r run immediately up to B instead of throwing that smoke from the Xbox, you usually see the terrorists winning, but uh, just great individual performance there from Dupree saving TSM. Oh, very fast play though from NIP into the A long area, but this standard setup with the three players there easily deals with that. Rest of the lineup going for the short push now, very fast with the AKs. And Zipnix, he's been doing very well with just a rifle on this position. He's got the full support of his teammates that can divert full attention to helping him out. Over towards the bomb site, NIP moving really fast. They're blinded. Good grenades coming in from Zipnix's teammates, but he, they aren't getting the kills just yet. And they are so close. Here, finally, the kills are coming. The fire goes down. The plant for NIP, but they get completely annihilated. And the defuse will come in without any trouble. And uh, there's no cash now on the bank for NIP. At the very least, the bomb went down, but uh, still... No buy for them. And the way NIP is playing right now is... They're playing with maybe too much confidence. There's no point in rushing short like that. You just have to like feel them out. As you were talking about earlier, you want to like figure out the positions of the city before you make a move as terrorists. But they just went out straight up short. Just thinking, okay, we, can, we will just out-aim them. That's what you're saying with the, doing that kind of a push. And uh, TSM just answering great with proper flashes and just demolishing that push. So a bit, maybe a lack of respect at the moment from NIP and uh, overconfidence proving a troublesome, but get right with the Tech 9 is going to claim himself an M4A1S. But how do they turn this into a round winning situation? I mean, no armor on any of the players, no nades either. Oh, they <laughs> line up for Dupree, just gunning them down, filling them with lead. And here comes Freiburg now with a pistol, but again, it's uh, very troublesome. With that being without Kevlar, due to the aim punch, and it's a 6-5 scoreline. And I would like NIP to go for the Wall of Smokes on A, and they don't have to commit to the A side. They can, like, drop down and see the spawn, try to go for a funky B split. But it was the round, I think they actually won that round as well. It was around round that Sittings was jumping on the box, and they shouldn't just try to just go straight out YOLO mid or short, as they had in the last two weapon rounds. Oh, that nade onto Exist. Exist has been actually receiving a lot of nades. Uh, another good one there from Zipnix. So, as, as you said previously, we're seeing uh, a lot of standard Dusty players, as, as you would expect. I mean, it's, it's kind of the beauty of this map for the T side. You take cat, you take mid, and it looks it always looks the same, but it can be A and it can be, and it can be B. And they've actually left both of those options open. They've got uh, Forest here on, on Upper Dark, but they've also got Get Right outside A Long. So, once they work out the positions of the players like you mentioned, then they can figure out where to go, but oh no, the bomb actually dropped there. Is that in front of the doors? I think it's on the other side. Yeah. Okay, it's on the other side, so he might not have even seen it. I guess he should know that the bomb is there, and it's going to get smoked off. And that's, that's a smoke basically used just to recover the bomb. Um, also, I guess a little bit scared of uh, device being on the AWP there. And KGB is also AWPing from the car position, so really strong A setup here for TSM. You, I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to go out there and say this, TSM have a huge chance to take this uh, defense. 
the Cajun be missing a crucial shot there. Gonna line up here for Carrigan. Taps both of them down, and it is very strong, very dominant, and uh, great setup there for TSM. Yeah, but once again, we see NIP just going out. With with no the, yeah, yeah, we were just running out the their AKs in hand. Two guys long, two guys on short, and like if they're playing defensively with ops, you you have to use your nades. Like they have such a huge advantage here, and. NIP did that smoke execution on A, and they won it. I just can't believe they're not trying that again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, as the saying goes. But another similar setup here from TSM. And now these double offs are going, and the confidence is rising for TSM. You've got to start being scared, because uh, it did seem that, that that first map was quite, quite something of a wake-up call. We have a strong first half here from TSM so far. Now, how strong can it be? The Tech Nines are in play for NIP. Ready to move up on mid, but some good nades to delay them, actually. And that's going to kill a lot of time for that CT smoke to go away. And they don't have any other smokes because they're on the Tech Nine buy. So this is really smart delay here. And the smoke's gone. They can't move up mid anymore. They've had to go up towards dark. And there are two players there ready to take the shots. And it's looking quite good here. The Mice pulls out the 5-7, takes down one. I might get another one, but it's going to be Zipnix who comes in to save the day. And again, TSM showing their class. Yeah, 8 to 5 to TSM. Now I think NIP was actually up 5 to 3 in this half. Yeah. And I, TSM is just playing defensive A every single round. NIP just has to go for that short execute again. Or they can go for a long execute as well. So we have a tactical pause coming in here. So you'd hope this would be Nati saying... Come on, guys, use the use the nades. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you, maybe you should get over there. Maybe if you shout really loud, they'll hear, they'll hear you. Yeah, but this is like really fundamental CS. Yeah. Like, if you're the attacker and they have a defensive op, like, how could you possibly just walk out onto that op? Especially if you're playing a player like Cajun B. Like, he's not going to miss that shot. It's like just a completely open op shot. <laughs> I'm just out of words. Like, what do you think? That they can just like strafe out and just instantly headshot them, or that KGB will miss those shots? It it's it's like a it it seems to be like a, a mix of a lack of respect for your opponents as well as the kind of overconfidence as well as not relying on the fundamentals enough and getting too far away from the fundamentals as yes, like you're saying, and that's always gotta be your fallback. You've always gotta have that that layer to your game of the fund strong fundamentals. And no matter who what kind of player you are, what kind of style you have and Hopefully we're going to see NIP returning to, to that. Ali's on the AWP now, and they got full nades to work with. Yeah, I'm standard opening here for NIP, and if we look at the overview, TSM just doing the exact setup they're always doing. KGMB there with the AWP can just rotate back to short, carry on along, and Sipnix and see the spawn. So Freiburg is looking for the entries now on middle. And also the information, if he's, it's not just what he sees, but what he doesn't see that tells them exactly how to handle the rounds. And uh, so he would have seen the nade from Zipnix, so now he knows that the player's dropped from Cat. So, but the thing is, there's still two in, in the B area, and in fact, the Vice is going to pick up the kill onto Freiburg, and now MIP are down to three players, and they don't know where to go. And uh, Device got that frag out into middle. I don't understand why the NIP, just, NIP player just went all alone, having nobody who could... Uh, do that revenge frag and let's see if they use the nades now or if they just will strafe out onto Cajun B. When I say Cajun, <laughs> you say they're all dead. <laughs> they're all dead threat. But the they're actually using out. smokes now. There you go. And there you go. Cajun B is the one that's going to be dead. It's going to be a sight take here for NIP. Good job from them. The, the, the grenades made all the difference. And it's going to be another frag coming in. Exist and Alu making it a two on two. Their health is waning though, and the defensive positions of NIP don't look super good at the moment. Oh my goodness! The, st the strafing jump from Device with the spray, gonna take down Exist. And we've got Alu there on the angles, all down to Alu. Can he stem the bleeding for NIP? There goes the peak in Device, almost pre-firing that. Excellent stuff there by TSM for the retake. But also, uh, kudos to NIP for changing it up. Yeah, and I just want to say, they almost won that round. It went a 2v2 after plant, and they only had three people left when they were doing that push. That's just the simple way you do it. You smoke up KGMB, 
he falls back to pick that Gandalf box, and then you can just strafe out from short, throw a straight flash, and he will get blinded. Like, and MP played that perfectly. On top of him. Yeah, exactly. And then you will just get the bomb site. And uh, I would just like to see NIP doing that with when they have for all five uh, players alive. Okay, well maybe they'll they'll get that going. They're gonna try take over long. And uh, it's just Carrigan there. He's actually been doing a really good job, and his teammates supporting him very well with the uh, with flashes. The NIP are really blind here. Carrigan has had loads of delay to actually get teammates and bodies here to help him out. And there it is. Zipnish coming in, gets a frag through the smoke. Carrigan picks up one. This is really effective. Zipnish coming in as well. And they've got nobody left. The bomb is down on long, and the entire play for NIP has completely failed as TSM have yet to lose a man. It's Forrest left alive against five players. And... There's a lot of time left in the round, but it's going to take something special. Here he goes. Got to recover that bomb. That's mission number one. But the clock is really against him here. As it makes most where he is. There's the single bullet. Very surgical strike from Zipnix. And he's on 20 frags. He came alive from the AD fences for his team. Yeah, and we can see Cajun Beast duck there in front of his monitor. Tapir looking very happy. And uh, why shouldn't he be? Leading 10, 5. Zipnix is even smiling. Yeah. Now now TSM has some smiles. Um, yeah, well, I think we're going to go straight into the second pistol. 10, 5 lead here for TSM. Kind not really a must win for NIP, but almost. Okay, so... Going to be interested to see what kind of pistol rounds TSM choose, and also NIP because you can get aggressive on the CT side too. But it's going to be TSM with a very fast long take with the bomb actually. It's a super fast A split from them, and uh, in fact, not necessarily they, they have taken over long. Are they going to commit to this? We do have NIP in pretty horrible positions to deal with this. They're going to go for the full retake here, keeping everyone alive that they can, and they're going to allow the bomb to go down. And the NIP is actually going to retake from short here. L wow, so many players here for NIP. They're completely butchering TSM. Just for sheer numbers. Safety numbers. Carrigan coming in from the back. That's super important. Gets a great tag on the forest. Down to 8 HP. Zipnix on the bomb site here for TSM. Trying to put the bullets in. But it's an, a really, really good advantage here now for NIP. And they're going to clean it up. Really amazing retake from them, to be honest. And I, I love the presence of mind with the positions they had to just say, hey, don't die. Let's take this slow. Let's let them let, let them plant. Yeah, I agree. But TSM kind of challenged short there one by one. We saw one guy trying to push, going down. Then they had one guy at the stairs, uh, just going down. And so it's like you should just try to either like go all three aggressive, or just fall back all three to the side. It was just too scattered there from TSM. Absolutely. So we've got a multitude of SMGs for NIP and. Uh, TSM with nothing really apart from just some PT-50s and a single flash for the long take. So, really playing to get the opening kills. And IP with two players for this uh, defense. And this is a massacre. <laughs> Ali picks up three. That's 1800 bucks straight up there for Ali. Which is the player you want the money on. As he, he's going to be buying the orb first, I would imagine. That was pretty ridiculous. That's a nice little pick-off on the fr poor Freiburg. I almost, I almost feel bad for Freiburg there. He just walks out and he's dead. Yeah. But that shouldn't happen. Sipnik's <laughs> well, actually having the game of his life now, and NIP with those SMGs got to bank up some money, but TSM is, of course, thanks to the plant and the pistol round, able to buy this round. We actually see a scout here from the device. Now, what do you think uh, he chose the scout? I don't know, maybe he really wants to tag someone jumping past middle doors. I don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we have two people here for NIP. Pretty aggressive uh, short play from them. And they also have support from Getra, who's standing close to the doors in uh, in middle. So NIP, they're actually getting ahead here of TSM with some very strong play. And Getra kind of throwing his SMG in there, taking a big risk, as he's not afraid to drop the SMG. And uh, that's it actually worked out well for, for NIP. They've got the information now. And Zipnix and Device have to clutch against four players. Time is on their side at the moment. And I think TSM just wants to go for the kills now. I mean, they're actually leaving the site completely open. TSM will be able to get that plant. And if TSM is able to at least get one or two more frags, I think they will be quite happy with this round because 
they're still able to force down a Pichu on Nico. So then why is it they've abandoned the A bomb side, do you think, with four players against two? I think they feel like <laughs> it's the most risky position to take M Jules versus an AK, and that's the only way they can lose this round. Because if you just go for the re a coordinated retake, there's no way they can lose 4v2. And that's what they're going to go for. So I like that decision, not afraid to give some extra economy to TSM to just have a sure sure win. And they need this round as well. And he's got an orb. They have they, they can't afford to risk this one. AK comes in, device doesn't get like a, a 1 HP for exist. Unbelievable. But they must finish this off. There we go, we've got two frags from device. This guy has been on fire, but this guy, Zitnix, he's been doing even better. He's going to finish things off for TSM, and they win the retake. Sorry, they win the defense of the retake. <laughs> I'm looking to you, Threat. Give, yeah. me, give me some answers. I don't know what happened there, really. NIP pro opting to go three from short. When, like, if you want to go for that a, a retake, I feel like you at least have to control long. So. Maybe they should just have left one guy in pit or long, I don't know, but just TSM outplaying them individually there on the retake. I mean, Device and Zitnik super hot at the moment, so those are the two players that needed to be left in that situation. And there's the, there's the Tech 9, using that pretty much uh, perfectly. Just just keep clicking that, that uh, left one button, and uh, you get some frags. So we've got a 5 on 4 situation with a good advantage for TSM on the weapons and now the players as well as they come in to this execution onto the B bomb site. Pretty simple execution that involves just running in with the guns and uh, getting the frags. What? But um, device, <laughs> someone's paid this man off. Where's the briefcase for the cash? Yeah, I'm very straight up round here. NIP with uh, P255 7 eco without armor. Not much they can do really. And they're just looking to at least get two or three kills. Cajun okay, is going to have a few frags here. Oh, missed the third one as well. Get right on 24 HP. Going to hunt him down out of the remainder of TSM. And they are now 12 to 7, so NIP losing a lot of uh, a lot of traction. And this man here, Zipnix, he's been his play on the A bomb site on on their CT side was completely crucial. If not for that, and to be honest. Not, I mean, that must have lifted his team so much. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, NIP going for the buy now, we actually see Aldo being able to forward that up. Opting to go for that defensive short position. And by the looks of it, NIP is going for a similar setup as to what TSM did at CT. Okay, so here we go. We've got Zinix looking for that entry now. He's gonna actually, is he going to drop straight down? I think they were trying to... Oh, the <laughs> double coming in! Alu, great stuff there! NIP, just what they needed. Zipnix will collect the bomb, and he's uh, the danger man at the moment from TSM's side. He's been connecting with everything. But this 3-on-3, three three, again, it's a, a retake situation for NIP. Get right, just waiting patiently now towards the CT spawn area. Gonna actually run and see if he can get the jumping spray. Gonna just uh, distract him slightly. And this is actually really cool from Get Right because he's just serving as a distraction here. And that's gonna allow Exist to take the kill. This retake going quite well, but Dupree in the pit. Yeah, with that AK. This position is so hard. It really depends if NIP has a smoke left so we can smoke him off. But by the looks of it, they don't. They do have a kit though, and I actually think he's short. Oh my goodness, he must. There he can spot the head there. Oh, Dupree was too slow. He's gonna be absolutely gutted. And I. I... I think he thought he went as far up as he needed to spot him, defusing. So he like went up and he was like, got like a full sense of um, security, like, oh, he's not defusing because I can't see him. But it was like barely he couldn't see the pixel of Getright's head there. And uh, and that could be the round yeah, that exactly. basically changes this game. Yeah, and NIP actually thought it was short as well. So if you just would have like rushed up the pit, just kill Getright, he would have won that round. Wow. Okay, so... 8 to 12 now, we have Kerrigan, very fast, really fast timing for a short peak, really fast. And he's always faking, dropping the bomb, I guess. Or? Yeah, that's or the only reason you do that, but, it, but it's usually just so obvious. Yeah. Because you can drop the bomb on the player, and it doesn't bake up sound, so... Maybe he just wants to bait out a grenade or something, and just use the trajectory to find out where a position might be. So an, like a weird, cute information play, I don't know. <laughs> but either way, it's going to be the B execute in. Straight up. Two from upper dark, three from mid. Forest now coming through. Great flash work coming in onto, onto, uh, from NIP onto TSM. And it's going to be a three on two now in the favor of the Danes. 
Alu does still have an AWP, but they're really far away, and you can see the smoke is causing all kinds of trouble. Now, looks like they want to go for this, or at least to try and get some damage in. It's a, it is a 2 on 3, and KJNB still on a Tech 9, sitting in the upper dark area. Flash is in here. There's the boost. Very common we see this now for the retakes. But Ali's not going to find anything. And without that very fast frag, they're like, okay, guys, let's just abandon this. Yeah, it's a good position here by NIP. Oh, Ali's going to lose the AWP, though. So it's going to backfire quite significantly. Really, uh, actually, there's a really nice work from uh, Zipnix there. Because he now picked up the AWP as well. And I just want to point out once again how strong that B split is. This B split is if you don't go for the Xbox smokes because a lot of teams just go to the Xbox, throw the smoke over the mid doors, and you just telegraph that you're going for the B split because they hear the bounce of the smokes off the wall. And yeah, exactly, you can show it there. What they do instead is just walk out mid, and while they're throwing the smoke, they start running up to B, which means it's like two seconds for the CTs to react, and they're right, in, right. already inside of B, and it's just so hard to stop that. Well, TSM now have taken over A, A long for free. I mean, it's, there's nothing on the buy here for NIP. Just the AK saved by Freiburg. And he's close on Catwalk. He's not going to hear anything just yet, but they will be aware that there are players towards long at the moment. So they are rotating, maybe gambling on the fact that it is, or could very well be an A play. Now, are TSM going to commit to this? It is definitely, a, again, we discussed before, the kind of anti-eco philosophy is great to go for the A stuff. And actually, NIP have rotated everyone. So they've reacted well, and the slow pace from TSM could actually hurt them here. However, if you just slow push long with proper nades, even if there's five sieges there, as long as they don't have armor and just pistols, TSM should be fine. Yeah, so not to be discouraged. They have a man... Uh, they're kind of a man down because he's waiting for rotations in mid and we've seen that he's missed all the rotations basically. So here we go, all the nades in. Now how much damage can be done by MIP? Well actually going to get a couple frags but the AK is down on the floor from MIP. It's just Ali and exists with USPs left over and it's going to be pretty safe here for TSM in the end. And down as well. So not much to worry about. Although they do lose three players, so that's kind of nice, but it's already two rounds to, uh, or well, one round to map point here for TSM to force the third map, or get 16 and force the third map, which was cash, right? Yeah. Yes, it was, and <clears throat> we saw there, even though NIP had five players on the A site, they only managed to get three kills. I actually was surprised that they even got three kills, but because there is just like no crossfires you can set up there on the A site, you just have to take those honest, honest duels versus them, and it's basically impossible, impossible on an eco. Okay, well, they're not far as close to the double doors, so MIP, not with the, the super standard setup, I think that's uh, get right joining him with the SMG. And they're gonna hear the smoke, oh, sorry, the flashes there. So this is a very committed position for us, gonna have to get a frag. He sees the shadow, that's gonna warn him. There's a, a bit of spray, but the, it's not gonna really help him out through the doors. Gets an easy frag, so the, oh, Forrest with three kills. TSM, what can they do now? It's Cajun being device. Device is gonna try to get a shot off, but Forrest with the perfect spot to hide from that. Cajun B will pick up a kill, and he's gonna move through onto the B bomb site, but in comes Forrest. Just gonna sit by the, dub the double doors of B and see what damage he can get done. He's going to be uh, very aware there's a player behind him. Freiburg will deal with that though. And in comes Cajun B. Forrest going to spot him. Just toying with him now, allowing his teammates to come and help him out. The bomb is down. Look how safe Forrest is playing. The, the, the NIP of like um, 20 rounds ago, Forrest will probably try and just take the jewel, jewel there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, great round by Forrest, but I also must say that was really bad by TSM. Especially the second guy coming from short there. It didn't yeah. look like he actually knew where Forrest was, he just like randomly jump up on the ledge and Forrest could easily get him and if you're walking out mid you should always be two guys close to each other so we can just trade. Like that's just basic CS and uh, I think Device just was just too afraid of Forrest there. Uh, yeah it really did seem that way and Forrest played it like his, his, uh, his uh, in-fight movement is so good. Like so good. Uh, that's a point that takes a, kind of some time to explain to someone who's not who's a bit newer to this game. But um, to those who know, 
what I'm talking about. It's something that we always love to see. Now we do have the push coming up catwalk here just for pistols. So they're going to go for that uh, short plant here. That's the objective. Get that money here for TSM. But Alu, it's a bit of a shooting practice here for him. And uh, jumping practice there for Get Right. And <laughs> so he does uh, get the jumping frags with the with the rifle. Yeah, um, uh, as we talked about earlier, it's basically impossible to push short there when you don't have any nades. But TSM is excuse because they actually were on an eco there. So, I mean, if you're on an eco, you can just risk it and say, okay, let's just try to jump around there towards the Gandalf towards site and just hope that uh, the opera will miss us. Okay, we have, uh, well, normal. Normal C here for NIP. Although they are playing 2 1 2, which is uh, not the most common setup, but it's fairly standard as well. Why do you think they j uh, chose that? I don't know actually, uh, but they're actually rotating back to a regular setup now. And three people are going towards long now. Freiburg all alone there. And the guy that's supposed to help him is actually playing on the A side, so I was really far back. You usually play the car because you can actually rotate back to long really fast, so Freiburg is going to have to pull a huge or long to be able to trade effectively. Alright, so on it's on Freiburg here, or it's on Alu to get a very quick kill on the Karagun if Karagun pushes so that he can help out if Freiburg dies. But in they go now, it's all about this man in the pit. I'm gonna spot them and there goes the flash. Now how good is it gonna be? Gets the first kill, only that though. Now Alu under huge pressure from both angles. Freiburg going down, they they collapse like a house of cards, and it's gonna be Exist and Forest on the rotation for the retake, and it's oh not looking good. Cajun B gonna cut that off. And TSM looking like they're gonna have a uh, map point secured now. Yeah, and that play from Freiburg is just, just so weird. You usually see one guy, you have to have one guy close along to help him because you basically can't trade effectively if you're playing alone in pit. Like you saw the one for one trade there. Like, mm. what, what could you expect to get like two guys in a row or something? But like, if you get that one for one trade in pit, you're basically giving the terrorist long and the round is basically lost from there. So, <clears throat> I would like to see Alu playing the car now so we can help Freiburg with flashes. Alright, well, let's see if that is what they're going to try to do, because it's Ali actually pushing Catwalk at the beginning here, and it's not going to amount to all that much. Doesn't get a, a fast kill, but I have to say that TSM are, are much faster than a lot of teams on the kind of timings that they take Catwalk. Um, I think we're seeing a similar thing from NIP as well. Harrigan moving forward, look at that, he actually saw that uh, the drop, he predicted the drop there down onto CT, but can't capitalize. 1 HP, that's... That's insane, but then it magic there for Ali to survive, and uh, NIP setup looks pretty strong still. Kijun B just trying <coughs> to get some information here in the middle. And that, that makes him look like a noob, but it's just a gamble basically. And that's going to be Friday for the new position with the SMG, and that's uh, him making the money. Shaking that money maker, and it's going to be four men surviving for NIP, so at least they're getting the economy back. We, and by the way, just to remind you, we have never had, well, rather, we, we haven't had an overtime this weekend or on Friday over the duration of this, this land finals. Yeah. We have not had an overtime yet, so can NIP pull it out? TSM going for the Tech 9 SP to 50 doesn't really make any sense if they're on. 15 rounds. It's not like they can money screw NIP since they only need one round to win. But uh, yeah, going for the long push now. Probably gonna be demolished. Actually, get the first kill. Oh, and this is dangerous. This is very dangerous for NIP. They have to secure these quick kills, and they do. A bit very scary there. That first frag, the drive by onto Ali, um, was was super scary. That's actually how those rounds get won. Yeah, and I've seen all <coughs> that a lot this tournament. People having 15 rounds and still going for the tech 9 buy, like without armor. It's like you, the only way that makes sense is if you're actually trying to win the round. Because you can't like screw their economy, so I would actually just opt to go for like the full Glock Eco. Because you only need one round to win. Mm. Yeah, it does make a lot of sense. You speak sense, sir. Uh... No, just AK for DSM. Double ops from uh, Alu and Get. Uh, sorry, Alu and uh, sorry Forest. Now, 
two man setup on B for NIP. They are mixing things up again. They don't have any mid presence. And this is the kind of timing that middle is is a little bit scary. And there is the kind of B split smoke or the mid push smoke. And there are no Danes behind it. I get right might uh, might discover soon uh, soon. And it looks like it's gonna be a B split fake or they're gonna push into B, but they want to fake that the Majority of the players are gonna go through mid, and you see Device are smoking C to spawn, waiting for the reaction from NIP, and yeah, there we go, the push is coming, coming in from Dark now. But Forest lands two very key shots, the fire comes in, it's really difficult, and they walk into the spray, the hail of bullets raining down on them from Exist M4, and that was super easy cleanup, and it feels like... How, how does... I mean, okay, do they have to find a way to deal with the guy on on plateau before they push in, right? Yeah, and I don't think they knew that Forrest had an op there on plateau. Maybe, I don't know if uh, NIP smoked it, because usually a big tell is if, if there isn't a smoke in right. tunnels. But seeing that NIP is just playing the standard setup as City right now, I want to see TSM going for the wall of smokes from short. I'm talking about this, <laughs> this entire map, but th that is the way to punish the standard way of playing City right now. Because you're cutting off the AWP, usually you have one guy CD spawn, we usually see Get Right actually playing in spawn, because you're afraid of the B split. And you can just cut him off by throwing a Molo towards Elevator, and just go and take over A and... Uh... Yeah, we saw when NIP did that round, they actually were really successful. Mm. Like they almost won that with only with, three with players. Two, yeah, with yeah. three guys. So I... And I know I have seen TSM do that smoke ball, so I'm really surprised they have a utilized it. Well, now they're going for the play. Just a pistol, trying to get the bomb planted on the B split. Bomb is down though, handled pretty well for here by the NIP so far. Exist on the plateau, and he's just trying to be sneaky. And this time he's not going to get a quick headshot with the PT50. So NIP one round away from the first overtime of the tournament, and it's going to be in the grand final. And of course, this this uh, this map, if they win Dust two. NIP are going to be crowned the champions, and I must say they didn't even qualify for the uh, the previous Face It LAN uh, finals in the, in that season. So that's a nice step up for them. And this round is obviously extremely important to both of the teams. The wife's back on the AWP. They've got three players moving through dark down into mid. So this is very, very standard basic play. But uh, if they don't leave anyone enough for dark, you'd expect that they'd be thinking more about the A split. But they do need to get that info. Bomb is uh, towards catwalk, actually. And he might actually go for that short play now. Okay, so it looks like they want to kind of maybe but fake the B a little bit. They're actually going to throw the smoke towards B, so... Yeah, exactly where it's pointing out right now. So I think they're going to go for an A split, where they exactly they push into C to spawn. And just try to like push short from two angles at the same time. Okay, so they're gonna get themselves through the smoke, pre flashing himself in. Forrest already getting the defensive frag onto Cajun B as they move forwards. Great snap there from Dupree onto Alu. Very important stuff here. Get right, he's holding this position down, but there is the trade. Trade for trade. Three on three right now as TSM try to take this bomb site, and the bomb is being planted for short by Device. Great stuff there from Freiburg. Oh, Freiburg coming in two huge kills, and there's the third Freiburg! Gonna save the round and force it to overtime in the grand final. TSM gonna be completely gutted. They should have been able to close Dust 2 much sooner, but now they gotta play overtime. And it's gonna be MR5, 16k. We're gonna be here for a while. Yeah, and it was, it was 15 5, right? So they had yeah. 5 rounds to win the game, and Freiburg. That's so, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's so awesome. Yeah, in, in that round, like 15-14 in the grand finals, and you're 3v3 three three going from long all alone as well, versus three TSM players, and it's just, it just looks so easy, you know, it's just playing with so much confidence, it's, it's just awesome to see. It really is, and especially, again, I brought the point earlier, Freiburg's been the guy of the team that's been having... Um, let's say, or been underperforming a little bit lately. So it's so awesome to see him having awesome rounds like that, especially in such important moments. And this is a super fast round here from TSM. They're going to stick onto the T side. That is gorgeous there from Zipnix, pushing straight on through. 
Alu, though, with a defensive frag. There's no pressure from short, so Alu has his undivided attention on that long area. And he's actually delayed the push on long. NIP, they need to get help right now to the A-bomb site because Get Right is going to be alone on the defense here towards Catwalk because Alu has to get these shots on long. And there it is. Drops the bomber. So NIP looking very good, although Alu will miss the shot. And in comes Cajun B with a double, but it's all on him. Wow, there's another one from KJB. He somehow makes it into a one-on-one. -on -one. And Forrest is rotating in from long. And of course, the bomb is down. Why would Get Right challenge there? Challenge there? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, Forrest just has to hit this shot. Oh my goodness, that was so fine. KJB didn't actually see him. You see him flashing towards short there. Oh my god. So KJB... Does KJB really have no idea? Oh, I, I really think he has no idea here, and Forrest might get a really cheeky angle. He's going to spot him, but Cajun B's now spotted him as well. And the problem is he can't move, he gets tagged as well. <gasps> Cajun B gets him so low, down to 18 points of health. As Forrest moves up, he knows that he must be low. In come the shots. Forrest out with a nade. This is so tense right now. Cajun B playing with the boxes. Any bullet will do it, and there it is. Cajun B somehow gets the shot. Oh man, that kind of scoot and shoot there from Cajun B was ridiculous. Oh, that's so tense and <laughs> great play there from uh, Cajun B to clash that round. But I have to ask, what? Why would Get Try challenge there from the bomb side? It would could it just have delayed him even more and just like do that peekaboo play where you just like show your head and just go down straight away? Okay, well, maybe uh, <laughs> doubles are going to help MIP out here. And that was such a close round. It does. It is the setup that's working the best for them um, against uh, TSM so far. And every time I see MIP recently, doubles have been their bread and butter. And of course, with the 16k, they can afford those straight away. And that's, that can be a struggle on the map like this, getting that CT economy. But it's overtime, so you kind of eliminate that from the equation. And that would, that should make this favorable for NIP in this half. And TSM, I think they know that Fryber is playing solo on low now, so TSM will just try to punish him with going for a long execute by the looks of it. Okay, so it's a very slow round. TSM has shown quite a, a strong pace in some of the rounds, but we have a, we have a much slower one here. So keeping at NIP guessing. I'm actually rotating back to short now, but Get Right is waiting for them there. Oh, Get Right spots the cat drop. He knows what's going on right now. Oh, they're all lining up for Get Right! Gets three kills! I don't believe it! That couldn't have gone better for an IP, and now he knows everything as well. Unbelievable stuff there. Forrest there with the AWP on the barrels of Plateau. They're going to be lining up for him. He's going to be missing the shots, but. Again, missing the shots here, but he's got the support from his teammates. And that's just typical get right timing. Like, that has never happened to me. Like, remember <laughs> the last time you worked out short and you had three guys in the back in lower dark <laughs> in a perfect line? Oh, yeah, that happens yeah. all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, like, in a grand final as well. Yeah. <laughs> Overtime. <laughs> just get right things. Hashtag get right things. Oh wow, nice shot there by Cajun B. Even through the door, I think. Clipping through the side. Pretty gonna be denied there. So one round of peace so far in this overtime. Oh my goodness, Carrigan going straight out, catching Get Right as he was trying to reposition into the uh, the mid defense. And NIP have lost everything towards the B side. I don't even know how that really happened. It, it seemed like MTSM just caught them out of position. Yeah, and very straight up round there from TSM and. Uh... NIP going for the save. Uh, is it 16k? Yep. So yeah, they they actually should save. Like, there's no point in going for this, and no point in going for exit tracks as well, since TSM will obviously be able to buy. And of course, oh, nasty. Um, so of course the the fact of the matter for NIP as well is, despite you know the economy playing less of a like having to the battle to establish it as CT being a struggle. Of course, having 16k straight away, as I made the point, that's not an issue to begin with. But because they have such an expensive setup, as you said, it, like double orbs, double orbs, double orbs, it gets really difficult to deal with on, on the money. But uh, a couple rounds left in this one. Agent B denied out of the A-long area. And TSM 
with a very basic round start again, just actually playing very slow. They're quite wary of cat pushes, actually. It's, they have a setup here where they are looking for a cat push, but it's not coming from an IP. Yeah, um, I think they're expecting TSM to do their four people dark push, but uh, that's not what's going on. Bomb is actually rotating back in T-spawn right now. So they waited until 1.10 here to smoke off mids and push into short with four players and they have three outside long. Are they going to go for four players on long or is Carrigan going to make his way up short here? Well, uh, there it is. He's going up for short. So the 3-2 splits. And Freiburg oh, once again just playing, playing solo here. I don't know. Like, Al is so far away. He's got to pull out something massive here in this round to make this work for his team. If he can slow down this with like a couple frags or even clean house, let's see. Here goes Freiburg with the spray, gets nothing. That is amazing for TSM. They're going to have such a fast pace. Ali's going to have no chance. He's burning alive. He can't do anything after Freiburg dies. And again, they fall like a house of cards. Once uh, it's, it's like uh, Freiburg is kind of like the linchpin and just everything collapses once they lose long in a situation like that. And uh, and by the looks of it, NIP was really expecting a B push there. Reckless actually saw Getright playing close to mid doors, really afraid of that B push and was close to B. And that combined with Alu playing on the A side, meaning that Freiburg, like he has no rotation at all, exactly. There was Getright, Alu was on the A side, so Freiburg not managing to get one single kill and... Uh, I really, I really, really think Aldo needs to play at the car now, and I think Freiber has to take a position, like strafe the pit, so we can get information, and then Aldo can rotate him, and they will try to kill them together. Because mm. then we see auto snipers here from TSM just trying to go for the kills when they pass the mid doors there. So this, like, I mean, this is a pretty, like this, this half is turning out pretty badly for NIP so far. They've only picked up one round. And again, it, it, I think it should, I mean, am I wrong in saying it should be CT favored here? I'm actually leaving out here now with the op. So that's, that's their adjustment. They've got a device just, just checking. Just checking to see what he can find out here. Trying to maybe bait out Picos, just get some info. Again, it's not only what you see, but what you don't see that can help inform them as to what a decision they want to make. Now. They've got two players up a dark here, and they're going to slowly actually push. It looks like a bit of a contact push. I think it's going to boost over the smoke. Oh, are, th are they actually going to go for that? No, they're just going to push straight out. And already the frag's coming in. Good setup here from NIP, but they're losing the duels. Forrest, although, he's, he's going to hold this down with the Famous for now. And Device is going to be stepping. Forrest has no HP. Device knows he's on the right. There is the frag. No! Device doesn't pick it up. Forrest somehow saves the day. And it's going to be Cage and B with the Tech 9 to finish the job. But that's going to put it to a 2 on 2. Forrest has given NIP a nice chance for the retake. And they're straight in there. Straight in front of the smokes. Cage and B playing by the big box. And the bomb needs to go down. There's 20 seconds for that to happen. As we do have Freiburg alone. And the plant will go down finally for TS. And that's going to be a bit of a relief. But we still have to take down Freiburg. Who absolutely is going to be going for this one. This crossfire is absolutely deadly though. And Freiburg will know where... Zipnix was, but Cajun B, the crossfire again, very, very dangerous. Four T rounds, that's that's going to be hard to live up to for NIP. Yeah, especially considering TSM will have 16k, meaning they can go for their double op setup. They can even go for an auto sniper if they want, only needing those two rounds. So NIP is in a lot of trouble now. I actually think we're going to go to the third map. Yeah, I, I agree with you I completely, completely. And uh, that's that's absolutely fantastic because this is such a good good uh, matchup NIP and TSM. So we're getting a great grand finals now. After the first map, I was afraid that we would be uh, a little bit disappointed um, with what we what could have been. But this this dust two has been fantastic, and TSM in a good advantage. Not going to get anything on the cross or NIP just yet. Just leaving Ali with the orb. But look at the timing. They're so fast down middle, actually. Just charging down. Are they going to go straight through, or what is the play here from NIP? They just want to get fast mid control, because they know the two guys on B is just playing so passive, just strafing the B doors to watch mid and having one guy see it spawn. So, there's no point in not taking control of mid fast. HE going for it. Dude, Zipnix's HEs are absolutely. And it's always exists. It's always exists. He gets headshotted by an HE. <laughs> this Zipnix guy, man, he's got. It's, I don't know. I don't know. 
if he like attaches magnets to it or what. <laughs> but that's next level. Did it actually do? It dinked him and then exploded. <laughs> Seven to three. That now it can't. He, he must have been hit in mid or something. Well, we have uh, the push coming in now. Up short. Not looking uh, too hot here for NIP so far, but they are going to take the bomb site despite being a man down. And get right there to try to cut off rotating players. It's just uh, Dupree though, who's in lower dark at the moment, and the long push coming in is going to be really scary, but so long as Gerard can hold on here, there is a chance for NLP to take this pretty easily, but it's not going to happen. Alu's got to go down to help out now towards Catwalk. That's going to give them a lot of room to move up towards long, and the push is coming. Alu took too long to deal with that player. He's now one on two. There's the first shot. Carrigan hits the ground. Cajun B needs to bait him out, but Alu's playing it perfectly at the moment. There is no time left for the defuse. Alu's done the job, and it's going to be around for NIP. Great 3K from Alu. Great play in the one-on-one. -on -one, yeah, very close. important clutch. And it really looked in the beginning of that round that TSM was going to win it quite easily, but NIP always playing strong in these like really tense situations in finals. And Zipnix is closing in on the 40 bomb. Oh, nice shot there onto Dupree, straight away at the start of the round. Now, fast push here from Freiburg again, very fast mid control. I have to say this is actually quite rare that I see such fast mid control. Is this a, is this a, a change just recently entering the meta? Uh, yeah, it's actually quite common now, just due to the fact that I stated earlier when uh, you very seldom have an AWP peaking mid. You just want to go two guys into B because you're afraid of like a fast B push and then you just stay into B two people and having one guy in C to spawn trying to get that B double door C to spawn crossfire if they go for the B split. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah it's quite common now actually. And this setup from NIP is is pretty pretty uh, sorry from TSM is pretty default as well. Uh, especially yet being a man down there's not much more they can do. They're kinda of gambling a little bit towards A. Which actually is, is the smart move, because A is the weaker site if the team splits 2-2. Two, two. It's easier to isolate a player. So, it's going to be the B play though from NIP, just going towards B despite that. And uh, that's going to end up hurting TSM massively. Now, I'm always, I'm always curious how teams play this situation when they get the early pick. Because a, a, the typical response is 2-2. Two, two, and you should always go A if you, if you can confirm that it is 2-2. Two, two. But the, and TSM gambled towards A. So I kind of think that TSM were, were expecting an IP to go well. And I, I think that was the correct play by TSM. Like, you yeah, have I to gamble. That. You're not going to be able to stop an IP while, with playing 2-2. Two, two. So either go for like 3 towards B, mm. 1 guy A, or 3 towards A, 1 guy uh, Yeah. And the 3 B, 1 A is, is probably the, yeah, risky, exactly. the yeah. riskier gamble. That's so. what I meant. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense. I think MIP were just trying to play against what was expected, basically, with that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think they have that much thought going to be. Like, sometimes when you don't have the information or where the seats are, you just basically have to go for the, like, <laughs> flip a coin, like A or B. Okay, <laughs> let's just go B, because you can't know where they're stacking. Yep. And, well, it's, it's, it's a pretty good start for MIP so far on the T side. You know, it's not looking too shabby. A double up here, Cajun B and Device. Now, two players up a dark for an IP. They are very defensive at the moment, really defensive. They've got, uh, it's usually Forrest who's actually like on the position that Freiburg's on, kind of looking for that cat aggression on top mid, but it was actually Freiburg this time. Um, so just uh, trying to stay, stay safe. But TSM, they, they often have quite passive setups. I, yeah. I, I'm not used to seeing a lot of aggression on their CT sides. No, it's still just playing the way most in place now. Two guys inside of B, one guy just spawn, one guy car, and one guy just playing aggressive long. What's the, what's the danger here for them? What what are they, would they be dreading NIP to do in this kind of a setup? I think the worst case scenario is, is either they do a wall of smokes on A, or they do the fast B split, where they just walk out and just immediately run up to B. And it looks like they're going for the wall of smokes on A. Okay, so... Very potent setup, as we saw previously from NIP, almost winning around a 3 against 5 on it. 
Sitnik's in position there towards the crossover. He's got a teammate beside him as well. I believe it is, uh, yep, Cajun B with the AWP. So the Wall of Smokes would absolutely render him useless. And there it is, the Smokes. But actually somehow Cajun B gets the shot through the smoke. The takedown exists as they charge onto the bombsite and get an instant plant. I think this going up and what can he do there stuck behind the smoke it's so powerful the three players left here for an ip though as they are slowly getting whittled down thanks to device and carrigan how are they managing to find these frags i'll never know but alu's got a clutch gets the first flick shot onto zipnix two players left though it's a short plant pulls out the tech nine and there's nothing he can do he's stuck behind the ganov box and it's going to be the defuse to tsm so and the, the two wow. key factors for TSM winning that round was Kerrigan winning the trade in pitch, of course. If he would have gone down there, it would have been absolutely disastrous for TSM. And also Sipnix predicting the short push. He was actually rotating up. He was already on the A site when the push came in. So those two things were the key factors for TSM winning that round. All right, well, and that puts them onto uh, map point. One more round for TSM, and they are going to force us to cash the last map of the grand final, potentially, if it does go that far. Because it is best of three. MIP with that 16 1 Inferno to kick things off. Sipnix playing this seed spawn position. And it's always so hard. It's, you always have to gamble a bit because if you're close here and seed spawn, you have a better position for that B split. But as we saw last round, if you're rotating up to A, you have a way better chance of winning if you go for the short push. Okay, well... And once again, great decision here for Sipnix. Playing C to spawn when it looks like NMP is calling for a B push. Yeah, no smoke just yet on CT. Perhaps we get the fast pop there and there it is. Wow, Zitnix pulling out the kill on to get right. Oh, he might just get caught there with the nade up, but no, Cajun Beast got his back and he's actually going to allow this awesome situation on the defense here device oh he's gonna miss the shot but dupree's there with the m4 it's looking fantastic here for tsm there's nothing for us can do he's stuck behind the smoke gets eliminated by zipnix and it's gonna be tsm forcing map three cash in overtime great stuff there tsm they close and this i mean i gotta say tsm they love making life difficult for themselves